All right, hey, uh, we're here today with the illustrious Howard Ungleiter. He is the lighting designer for Rush. Hey, Howard. Pat, how are you today? I'm good, I'm good. Now, amongst your, your various talents, one that uh, a lot of people don't know is that you have a fantastic talent in bartending. I, for one, I, for one, know that I've had a few of your drinks and they changed my life. So, uh, listen, uh, what are we making today, Howard? Actually, I remember the life-changing situation, Pat. Oh, and no. uh, we were traveling through the village of Les Scruts at the time, actually, coming out of the Czech Republic, and uh, Pat sat around with us and en enjoyed the beverages that we were uh, having that night. And yes, after a long day at work, when you're stressed out, you come back, you want to relax, you want to have something that's pleasant. You want to have a nice drink that you can sit back, relax, and talk to people. So here we have one of my favorite mixed combinations today, as you can see. Um, it's a Mai Tai, it's my Mai Tai that I make for everyone when they get stressed. You know, and, uh, awesome. Well, let's, let's see how you make it. Let's see how Howard makes Howard's Mai Tai. Okay, well, first of all, you have to enjoy rum because it's a rum-based drink, and it's made with one of my favorite pineapple juices right here. As you can see, dull, unsweetened pineapple juice. So you don't need to sweeten it too much. And we have a wonderful glass of ice, which all drinks need. And we just choose some pineapple rum right here. You know, I love this rum because of the flavor, you know, pineapple flavor, very tropical. You just look at it and you just spill it like that, you know, maybe a little bit more, just a touch, for flavor, because you don't want to overbear the drink. The other thing that we have here, and it's one of the wonderful drinks from the tropics, look at this, Bacardi Coconut Rum. Now, I'm not doing commercial for Bacardi, but this is a flavorful rum that blends very nicely with pineapple as you just drizzle a little bit in. So, Howard, you're, you're not getting a kickback from Malibu on this? No, actually, no, I'm going to turn Bacardi? it around. Um, this is the White okay. Album. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is sort of like the White Album, right? It's okay. Like, there's, no, there's no name on that one. Um, you know, for m many hours and directing the show and dealing with various spot operators and, you know, laser guys and pyrotechnic guys, it's a stressful job. It's almost like an air traffic controller, so this is the perfect drink. So we'll continue a little bit with this. So now you've seen we've got the pineapple rum, we layered in some coconut rum for flavor, and here's one of, another one of my favorite no-name <laughs> rums. It's a, it's a spiced rum. Yeah, as, as seen on television, I usually crack a little bit of this and just spill a touch in just for a nice amber flavor rum. Because rum is the key of this drink. It but could be Captain Morgan's. It could see, be, right? It is Captain Morgan's. Okay, okay we'll see. Right. Captain Let's Morgan's. Just call it what it is. Oh, you know. Yes, I don't get any money for this <laughs> at all. <laughs> Back by popular demand is one of my favorite here. This is the, uh, the it's called the capper. We're going to put this on the side for now, but I'm going to teach you a little something about catalyst rums. To blend the catalyst flavor, so make sure that the rum now is no longer tasting alcoholic, we use this little beverage here. It's called Amaretto. I'm sure you've all heard of that, especially you ladies out there. I know you love this drink. This is an almond flavored liqueur that you just sort of splash it in a touch, like that. Ah. And it then changes the flavor of rum to sort of almond cherry flavor. And it becomes very, very delicious at that point in time. And it's almost irresistible because now you no longer can taste the alcohol. Okay, so now we, we're ready to put in my favorite pineapple juice, Dole, from Hawaii. When I was out in Maui, actually, they went through the pineapple fields and uh, sampled some of their non-acid pineapple juice, which was, look at this, beautiful colors. Just that spilling. Is, that is, is that not a beautiful color? Unbelievable. Okay, well, now I'm going to ask my assistant Adrian to hand me a spoon from over here. So we could just blend it a little. And we're going to mix it around right now. As you can see, I want you all at home. You may not want to do this at home. Really, why not? What do you mean? It's kind of a bit dangerous, you know, when you start to mix this stuff. You don't want it to be explode or go flammable on you. Really? Well, no, it's Jeez. just, it's a very nice drink. <laughs> now that you have mixed it thoroughly and you've blended it all together, we need to have this, Myers rum. 
Myers is the darkest rum. I love it myself. I usually drink it right out of the bottle, but I'm not going to do that now. And I'm going to just I'm going to put it right in here on top to float it in. And it just floats through the drink. Um, you don't mix that. It just... You don't mix it. Let it sit in there. It's good for the, like you want to just taste it and it gives you that kick. You know. And, and on the bus here, like generally at home, you'd be doing this in a clear glass, and you'd, you'd see have a, all you of would the... see everything. You have right. a nice tall glass. You're on the bus. We're on yeah. the bus. We're yeah. on the road. Yeah. I mean, I do have some glasses here, but you know, if the bus lurches, you know where that drink's gonna end. And up. it's sticky. Yeah. You know, it's not great. Yeah. I rem I remember that from the village of Les Scrutes. Les in Les Scrutes, it was very sticky. I mean, <laughs> I, was, weren't you on the floor of the bathroom for quite a while in Les Scrutes? I'm sure that wasn't me. Uh, At okay. least I can't remember. This is a secret ingredient here. This is a little bit of grenadine which you've seen before to make Shirley Temples for the kids. You kids that can't drink booze yet, this is a very good drink. You can mix this with a club soda and you can pretend that you're drinking. I don't wanna I don't wanna encourage uh, I don't wanna encourage anyone too much. Heavens no. Listen, I've been to Alcoholics Anonymous and I was there for a reason. And I tell you what that reason was, because now when I drink, no one knows who I am. So that's that's what works very well, right. and that's my own little twelve-step thing. I'm not making fun of this because I know it's very serious. Anyway, when it's in season, I will take fresh mint and then place it on top. But it's not in season right now. And we're in the middle of a field outside of Chicago where it's definitely not in season. But I'd like to have you at home to now watch as I have some ambient guests come in here to sample it for the first time. Come on, Steve. Come in here and sample this right hey, Steve, now. Steve, have a sip of that and tell us what you think. Yeah. Don't block the camera, Steve. It's, let them see you drinking. Yeah, come on. And the camera's going to go. Now, have a little sip of that. And is that refreshing? Unbelievable. Is that, a, is that the best you've ever had? That is definitely the best drink I've ever had. Which wow. leads me to you know something. I, I have made this drink. Well, I actually ordered this drink in Las Vegas at a bar that I will not name at the time. It's supposed to be a really high, you know, high caliber bar. They couldn't make one to save their life. Oh, can I keep it? You can keep it and go to your seat, Steve. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, Howard, that is that is excellent. Have you tasted this before? Uh, you, you know, it's very I, conducive. I you can sell a lot of shirts after drinking this. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Let it's, me try that. It's good for the merch people. This would definitely that is, make the t-shirts look better. Yeah, give me it my would. drink back. Oh, anyway, sorry, Steve. Getting back to, so in Las Vegas, which is one of my favorite cities, I ordered a Mai Tai, and it came to me, it was just like drinking uh, vinegar. It was awful. They didn't know how to make it, so I actually taught the bartender. I said, hey, try one of mine, make it this way, and let me know how you like it. And he made it, and then months went by, and I went back to that bar a few months later, and... It's the biggest selling drink in the bar right now. Matter of fact, I You're get kidding. all my Mai Tais for free from that bar from now on. So everyone who's watching this today, have a great day. Have a good drink. And if you don't drink, well, there's always the Shirley Temple. <laughs> Grenadine. It may be funny to you, but I take it very seriously. So uh, also, these are the colors of the lighting fixtures. You know, like I like these colors. I use them in my show. Look at this. You've seen these on Rush shows before, right? I never would have picked that up before. I am inspired by any, everything. How about the Midori as well? I guess that one's as well. This yeah. one I've used for this. And between the wheels, you'll see this creeping in behind the background. Really? Look at the beautiful col green color. That's we call fantastic. this an R90. That is fantastic. Anyway. Thanks for coming by today. Hey, thank you, Howard. And there's something next week we'll be making maybe a mint julep for you people that Ooh. are down at the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, man. You're welcome.